Right now, scientists expected the sun to be in a relatively quiet phase, but that's not happening. Instead, the sun is waking up. The solar activity is faster and fiercer than expected. The alert came from the Parker Solar Probe as it skimmed the sun's corona. The magnetic field readings were off the charts, confirming what a few rogue scientists had feared for years. So there's an urgency in understanding what it is that the sun is doing, what's it going to do next, and how can we prepare for that and respond to it. The sun's long cycle, the 88-year Gleisberg cycle, hasn't just woken up, it has entered a feedback loop. NASA is now facing an unthinkable reality. The star that gives us life has just crossed a point of no return, triggering a centennial grand maximum. This isn't just another solar storm. It's a fundamental shift in the sun's behavior, and the silent confession from inside the agency is that they are not prepared. The great cycle ignites. What many have overlooked is that the sun we see today is not the same sun our grandparents knew. For nearly a century, our star has been in a relatively calm phase of its longest and most mysterious rhythm the Gleisberg cycle. You see, while everyone is focused on the familiar 11-year sunspot cycle, this other, far grander cycle has been quietly building power in the background. It's a huge, slow-moving wave of energy that lasts anywhere from 80 to 100 years, and it controls the intensity of all the smaller cycles within it. When the Gleisberg cycle is weak, we get decades of a quiet sun, but when it awakens, it unleashes a century of solar fury. And right now, according to startling new data, it is waking up like never before. The first clue that something was seriously wrong came from the current 11-year cycle, Solar Cycle 25. Official predictions from space agencies suggested it would be a weak, unimpressive cycle, much like the one before it. But the sun had other ideas. By late 2024, it was clear that the predictions were completely wrong. The number of sunspots appearing on the solar surface was more than double the forecast. The sun was churning with activity, spitting out powerful X-class solar flares, the most intense kind, at a rate that shocked observers. The thing is, this wasn't just a fluke. It was the first sign that a much bigger engine was revving up deep inside the sun. This bigger engine is the Gleisberg cycle named after the German astronomer who first noticed that the strength of the 11-year cycles wasn't random. He saw a pattern, a super cycle, where the sun would have several decades of strong activity followed by several decades of weak activity. The last time the Gleisberg cycle peaked was back in the 1950s, a period of intense solar storms. Since then, it's been in a long, declining phase, leading to the unusually weak Solar Cycle 24, which ended in 2019. Scientists thought this quiet trend would continue. They believed we were entering a prolonged period of solar calm, maybe even a mini ice age. But truth be told, a fundamental shift was happening, and the data from our most advanced solar observatories, like the Parker Solar Probe and the Solar Orbiter, started telling a different story. These probes, flying closer to the sun than any spacecraft in history, are measuring the sun's magnetic fields directly and they've detected the source of this new awakening. The sun's internal dynamo, the massive engine of churning plasma that generates its magnetic energy, is spinning up. The conveyor belts of plasma that circulate material from the sun's equator to its poles have accelerated to speeds not seen in over a century. This is the heart of the Gleisberg cycle. A faster conveyor belt means more magnetic fuel is dragged down into the sun's interior, only to re-emerge later as bigger, more numerous sunspots, powering stronger and more violent solar cycles. To put it mildly, the sun's engine is being supercharged from within. This isn't a gradual increase, it's a phase transition. The data shows that this process has now become self-reinforcing, a feedback loop that has officially crossed a point of no return. We are now locked into a course for a centennial grand maximum. Now, a new solar storm is about to hit Earth in the coming days. A cycle of collapse and rebirth. The scary part is this isn't the first time the Gleisberg cycle has dramatically changed life on Earth. History is filled with evidence of its awesome power, but we've only ever really paid attention when it turned cold. The most famous example is the Maunder Minimum a period from 1645 to 1715 when the sun went eerily quiet. Sunspots, the markers of solar activity, almost completely vanished for 70 years. What was happening? The Gleisberg cycle was at its weakest point in millennia. The sun's great engine had slowed to a crawl. The effect on Earth was catastrophic. 
it triggered the coldest part of a period known as the Little Ice Age. Rivers like the Thames in London and the canals of Holland froze solid for months on end. Glaciers in the Alps surged forward, swallowing entire villages. Crops failed across the globe, leading to widespread famine and societal upheaval. That's what happens when the Gleisberg cycle goes to sleep. So the question we have to ask is, what happens when it enters a state of hyperactivity? We don't have to guess. We have a terrifying preview from 1859. The sun wasn't in a Gleisberg maximum then, but it was in an unusually violent solar cycle and it unleashed the most powerful solar storm ever recorded, the Carrington event. In September of that year, a colossal coronal mass ejection, or CME, slammed into Earth. The burst of energy was so intense that telegraph systems worldwide went haywire. Operators were electrocuted, telegraph paper caught fire, and some systems continued to run for hours even after being disconnected from their batteries powered by the storm's energy alone. The northern lights, the aurora, were seen as far south as Cuba and Hawaii, so bright that people could read newspapers by their light at midnight. Now here's the thing nobody tells you. The Carrington event happened in a world lit by gas lamps and powered by steam. It was a spectacular curiosity. But a Carrington-level event today would be a civilization-altering catastrophe. It would instantly overwhelm and collapse our power grids, plunging entire continents into darkness for weeks, months, or even years. The transformers that manage our electrical grids would be fried beyond repair, and it could take up to a decade to build new ones. Every satellite in orbit would be disabled, wiping out GPS, global communications, and financial transactions. In a matter of hours, the digital world we depend on for everything would simply cease to exist. A 2012 study from the National Academy of Sciences estimated the cost of such a storm could exceed $2 trillion in the first year alone, with a recovery time of 4 to 10 years. And that was before the Gleisberg cycle woke up. The new data suggests that a centennial grand maximum driven by the awakening Gleisberg cycle will make Carrington-level storms not a once-in-a-century possibility, but a regular threat. The sheer amount of magnetic energy now building up inside the sun means the CMEs it produces will be larger, faster, and more frequent. We are entering an era where the sun will be a constant, active threat to our technological civilization. The warnings are written all through our history in tree rings and ice cores that show the scars of past solar maximums. But we've never had to face one with our entire existence plugged into a fragile electronic web. And the peak of this new cycle is still years away. The Dynamo's Feedback Loop So what does this point of no return actually mean? This isn't just a dramatic phrase, it refers to a specific process that solar physicists are now seeing in the data from probes like the Solar Orbiter. The Sun's magnetic dynamo is a chaotic and complex system, but it operates on a delicate balance. For centuries, that balance has kept the Gleisberg cycle oscillating in a relatively predictable way. But the latest measurements of the plasma flows deep inside the Sun show that this balance has been broken. The system is tipped into a new state, one governed by what is known as a positive feedback loop. Think of it like this. The sun's magnetic field is generated by the movement of hot electrically charged gas or plasma. As the Gleisberg cycle ramps up, the plasma conveyor belts on the surface speed up. This pulls more magnetic fields down into the interior. As these fields get concentrated and twisted by the sun's rotation, they become more powerful. These more powerful fields then erupt to the surface, causing the conveyor belts to speed up even more. One process feeds the other creating a runaway cycle of amplification. Each 11-year cycle will now be stronger than the last, feeding even more energy into the next one. This is the point of no return. The process has become self-sustaining. We can no longer expect the sun to naturally calm itself down in the coming decades. It is now locked on a path toward a massive peak of activity sometime around the mid-2030s. This is the unthinkable confession that is being quietly acknowledged within the scientific community. The models they use to predict solar behavior are broken because the sun has entered a new physical regime that those models didn't account for. The danger is that we are flying blind. We are heading into a storm with no historical precedent in the modern age. The preparations we have in place for solar storms are designed for the normal events of the past century but they are completely inadequate for the kind of superstorms the sun will be capable of producing during a Gleisberg Grand Maximum. 
The consequences are hard to fully comprehend. The first line of defense to go would be our satellites. The increased energy from the sun would heat and expand Earth's upper atmosphere. This creates more drag on satellites in low Earth orbit, causing their orbits to decay much faster. During a major storm, a torrent of high-energy solar protons would also bombard their electronics, frying circuits and rendering them useless. We're talking about the potential loss of thousands of satellites, including the Starlink constellation that is becoming vital for global internet, not to mention all the GPS weather and communication satellites we rely on. Our planet would be digitally isolated, but the greatest threat lies on the ground. A powerful CMEE hitting Earth induces immense electrical currents in long conductors, like power lines and pipelines. These currents would flow into our electrical substations, overloading and melting the giant transformers that are the backbone of the grid. These aren't off-the-shelf parts, they are custom-built, weigh hundreds of tons, and take years to replace. A widespread outage wouldn't be a blackout. It would be a grid shutdown. The sun is no longer just a source of light, it's a loaded weapon. A world unprepared. So here we are. The evidence is mounting that our star has entered a new and dangerous phase, one that will last for decades. This isn't happening overnight. It's a slow motion discovery unfolding in complex solar data that most of us never see. And it begs the most important question of all, are we ready? The truth is we are nowhere close. Our modern world is a house of cards built on the assumption of a calm and predictable sun. We have spent the last century building a global civilization that is exquisitely vulnerable to the very star that sustains it. Think about your own life. How long could you last without electricity, without the internet, without GPS? For most people, the answer is a matter of days. Our food and water distribution systems, our financial markets, our healthcare, our communications, everything is run by computer systems that require a constant stable supply of electricity. A grid-down scenario caused by a Gleisberg supercharged solar storm wouldn't just be an inconvenience, it would be a cascading failure of every system that keeps society running. And yet there is no global, coordinated plan to protect our infrastructure. We are, to put it mildly, sitting ducks. Many people watching this are looking for a mystery, for a sign that something big is happening. Well, this is it. But the story isn't about aliens or prophecies. It's about a clear and present danger that is being drastically underestimated. Are we being told the full story by our leaders? While space agencies release sanitized press statements about active solar weather, are they having more serious conversations behind closed doors? Are they aware that our entire way of life is balanced on a knife's edge, dependent on the whims of a star 93 million miles away? The thing is, hardening our electrical grid against a major solar storm is possible. The technology exists, but it would cost billions of dollars and require a level of political will and international cooperation that seems to be in very short supply. What many have overlooked is that we have become complacent. We've had a century of a relatively peaceful sun, and we've mistaken that lull for the norm. We've forgotten that we live on a planet embedded in the atmosphere of a volatile, middle-aged star. The Gleisberg Cycle's awakening isn't a freak event, it's a return to the sun's natural, more violent state. It's a fire drill for our entire worldview. The sun's great cycle has returned, but is its timing purely natural or is something else influencing our star? Hit the like button, subscribe, and tell us in the comments if you think we're ready for what's coming.